how to trade with candlesticks. Now, I'm going to give you the basics. But most people learn about candlestick patterns. Okay? And they memorize all these patterns. You need to have some familiarity with them. But memorizing them, no trading by the rules of what they tell you to do, no. We have candlestick charts, number one. The charts help us see what price is doing without looking for any patterns or anything else. They are a very good representation, a visual representation of price movement. Then we have candlestick patterns like dojis and hammurabis and engulfing them and, um, oh, God knows, um, my brain's not functioning right. Three black soldiers, three white, white crows, all of these convoluted patterns. Well, years ago, when trading was just a much slower paced world, and we didn't have online trading, and assets moved slower and we were hand charting, we could have the time to look for these patterns. Today, the market moves so fast, looking for all of these patterns, or, or simple patterns like a, a bearish or bullish and go, which happen all the time, or doji that happens God knows how many times, doesn't really tell you anything. But I'm going to also show, show you some shortcuts. But being able to read price with your candlestick charts is really a great way to help you out. Now, candlesticks are a form of charting developed by the Japanese rice traders in the 17th century. A legendary rice trader known as Hama is credited with the development and the use of the form of charting. Now, remember, the what is more important than the whys. And all known information is supposedly reflected in the price shown on the candlesticks. Now, each candlestick represents a data set of complete price action during the selected time frame. So, in other words, let's see, there, there we go. In other words, each one of these candles, let me get my marker up here. Sorry. Each one of these candles represents the open, the high, the low, and the close of that time period. So if we're looking at a one hour chart, this would be the high of that one hour chart, that one hour period, the low, the close and the open of that one hour period. If price fell from the open to the close, we would color in that candle. If price climbed from the open to the close, in the old days, we would leave it blank, or today we use a green candle. So when we see green, we automatically know that the market's moved up during that session. If we see red, we know that it was a bearer session or the markets fell during that session. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, if that's a one hour candle, can't we cut it in half and have two 30 minute candles? And wouldn't that be the same? Well, that's not the case because when we're looking at a 30 minute chart we don't know when we're looking at that one hour candle whether that high was obtained in the first 30 minutes of the trading period or the, the second 30 minutes of the trading period we don't know what the open or the close was for that half hour so we have to use a half hour chart instead of an hour chart so we can see more definition of what the markets are trying to tell us. Now, this is called the wick or the shadow. And this is called the body of the candle. Now, I try to explain this and not all of us grew up in the same place, not all of us are in the same country. But when I was young, well, God knows how long that was, but when I was young, we used to have a game called tug of war. And especially when we were out in the parks and the forest camping and hiking during the summertime or summer camp, one team would take one side of the rope, the other team would take the other side of the rope, and they would pull back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
sometimes team A would get pulled into the river, but then they yank back and pull the other team in. Sometimes they would all stay kind of where they were in neutral. Sometimes for a half hour, team A dominated team B, and team B was pulled all the way in the water. Well, if you imagine this candlestick, it's just that. You see the different tugs and the different positions that this team, the two teams were doing over the river. Because these candlesticks, these wicks, are very important. Because they tell you about some type of strength that was generated during that session. The length of the body also tells you something about that tug of war that happened. Because if the body's very long, that means team A pulled B, team B all the way in almost across the river before they were able to pull back. Okay. If it was a short body, it means team A pulled maybe the first guy on the other team in. Then they pull back and they got the tip. And what happened was you end up with a very short candle because there was movement, but little movement. So sometimes you could have a big wick, but little movement in either direction. Or sometimes you have big wicks and little movement. But understanding the battle that is ensuing helps you understand what price is. Because, you know, we talk about these opens and closes. We talk about these highs and the lows. But these opens and closes and highs and lows are only a mark because it's only where that team ended up when the guy blew the whistle at exactly 11.15, when he blew that 15-minute whistle, where everybody froze. Okay, so that's all it is. It's a picture in time. The open, the high, the low, and the close. But if you could see all the movement that open, high, low, and close, and that overall movement that happened in those 15 minutes, you might get a better picture of what is happening. Now, I'm going to digress a little bit. Only time, because we talked about briefly the red. If you ever you see a red candle, you know that the close was lower than the open. In other words, the overall movement for that period was down. If you see a green candle, we know the open was lower than the close. In other words, you moved up during that session. Now, the colors are unimportant. If you decide you want to use pink and chartreuse, or you want to use purple and gold, as long as you know which one is your bearish and which one's your bullish, it's completely up to you. Sometimes I've seen some brands that on their charts, they automatically default to their company colors. You could change them all, but it's not important as long as you know which is bullish and which is bearish. Now, in the old days, when I started trading, and we didn't have charts. You know, once once a week we we subscribe to a charting service, and once a week you receive in the mail this little it wasn't it was like the newspaper paper, but it it was packed full of your charts, and they were all printed out on a weekly basis, and then you could use them for the next week. But we would sit in the pits with graph paper hand charting. We also did have magic markers back then. I think we might have started having some big colored pens. But most of us sat around and we had our little pocket protectors because you had all of your pencils and your pens in your pocket because you're constantly writing things down while you're in the pits. And you're charting using pencils. Okay. Now, if it was a bullish session, you would leave your candlestick hollow. You wouldn't fill it in because we didn't have any red markers or red crayons. If it was a bearish session, you take the side of your pencil and color it in. So what we had in those days are what we referred to as black and white candles. The only reason I mentioned this to you is because a lot of the candlestick patterns or a lot of literature you read 
we'll refer to as the black candle or the white candle. Today, we would write this literature as the green or in the red candle, but there's some patterns that the names of the patterns are three black soldiers, three white, three, three black crows, three white soldiers, and the names came around years ago. We're not changing it to three green soldiers and, and three red crows. Okay, so when you see these or you read the literature, you automatically know. Because a lot of times I find if I don't explain it, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. But if I don't explain it, people start reading literature and they can completely confuse some black and white. And so it's just an outdated coloring system. Okay. But this is basically understanding what makes up the candle. So you can see on my diagram here, we have black and white candles. Now, compared to traditional bar charts, many traders consider candlestick charts more visually appealing and easier to interpret. And ultimately, I was a bar chart trader for years. And a lot of reason being is they were easier to put on your chart but when we didn't have these new modern HTML charts and they weren't color charts, it was very hard to see your candlesticks. So everybody used bar charts. It wasn't until the last few years that we have all these HTML customizable charts that make candlesticks easy to put on there, easy to read, and easy to see. But remember, each candle provides an easy to decipher picture of price action. Immediately, a trader can compare the relationship between the open and the close, the high and the low. Now, we talked about what does the size and the shape of the candle mean. Okay. So if we see wide candles, we know that there was a lot of price action during that session. If we see little candles, we see, we know there was a lot, a lot less movement. And the smaller the body, the more indecision there was in the markets. But these candlesticks all tell a story. They tell us what happened in that session and who ended up in control of that session. Now, if you happen to have been trading and say you had a black candle or a white candle and it closed at the same point as the high, so it had no upper wick. And there's a name for that candle, but it had no upper wick. Most likely, the only reason it's not moving any farther is because the session closed. So what does that tell you right away? It's most likely going to continue up because the bulls were in complete control. And they, the time frame closed while they were still dominating the markets. When we see candles with long tails, either direction, that tells us here, that the bulls pulled very, very, very hard, but they got exhausted before they could close towards the high, but they still were in control at the end of the session. And this is important because if you know who's controlling the market, you can make better decisions. But don't get yourself lost in a psychological response to groups of, or reds and greens. Because these do not say to take a position. So don't let your mind sway. Don't get lost. Let's pull up a live chart here. Don't get lost when you see lots of reds. Okay. Don't get lost when you see four greens in a row. Okay. You're seeing a visual representation of price. But don't get caught up in all the colors. Don't make decisions because you see lots of red on the screen. Now, we'll come back to this in a second. But like there are, now we can break down candles into what we call patterns. Okay. Please don't learn these, don't memorize them. Familiarize yourself with them. But like the Marabuzo is a very important candlestick. But you would notice it anyway, because what does a Marabuzo have? It's got no highs and no lows. It means 
It opened, and if it's a green candle, it ran the whole entire session and closed at its very high. The red's just the opposite. Well, that's an important candle, but not to memorize the name. It's an important candle because it's not no wicks. It tells you something about the battle. Now, if you want to me memorize what a marabuzu is or the name, go right ahead. Then we have things like spinning tops. Spinning tops tell you the market's in indecision because there was little movement and the upper and the lower wicks were relatively the same. Now, when the wicks are pushed in either other direction, we can get some inkling about what's happening, but spinning tops look just like tops. And then doji. Doji's a funny one. A doji used to be this. It meant that the open and the close were exactly the same. So what does that tell you? That nobody is in control of the markets and nobody's making any decisions. But because today, because of all the modern technology and online trade, we're now trading you know, four or five pips to the right. Very rarely is the euro going to open at 1069424 and close at 1069424 again. Probably going to close at 1069492421. So today we define the doji as the open and the close are virtually the same. But it does allow some play because otherwise you could never count the pips. But a doji is important based on where it appears in your chart. Because an average trading system, you'll see a ton of dojis. But if a doji happens to appear directly on a major line of support and resistance, that tells you something about that support level. So not just for the doji, but for all the patterns, we need to see where they are in relationship to the previous price, the current price, and where the trends are. When a doji appears right by a trend line or by a support or resistance signal, it's telling us something about the selling or the buying pressure. Whereas just when it appears in the middle of a trading session, doesn't. So we always have to be looking at our candlesticks and our trends and our levels of support and resistance to be able to make some type of an educated decision. So doji is, like I said, a very prominent one. And the key to doji is that neither the bulls nor the bears have gained any control. It's a total sign of indecision in the market. So if price, imagine you have price moving up and it hits a major resistance level. And right here at this resistance level, a doji forms. That's telling you that the bulls who had been pushing up the markets have most likely lost their conviction at that moment and are trying to decide whether they should continue pushing up price or whether they're going to start selling off the markets. So that tells you something crucially important. So the next step would be even more, the next time frame would become more important to us. So again, like you see here on this chart, where the doji is appearing, but always candlesticks, forget the pattern. When you look at candlesticks, you should always be looking at them in relationship to the other candles around them, as well as other things on your charts, because they're trying to tell you a story, but you have to know what story to look for. And again, there are 17 known patterns, primary patterns. There's 32 generally accepted patterns, and there's 70 overall patterns. If you want to memorize them all, you can. But they don't do you much good anymore in your trading. Let me pop up my chart again because I'm going to show, I'm going to show you some helpful hints here. Okay. First of all, 
getting lost in pattern recognition and memorizing what the pattern tells you to do is a very bad way to trade because then you're not making a decision. You're getting everything psychologically psyched up for you as opposed to you reading what it's doing. Today, most of our more advanced charting allow you to automatically drop candlestick patterns on your chart. So all I did was go up to a, a script here, click on all patterns, and see all this? B, E, B, E, D. These are all where a candlestick patterns appeared, and I can just put my highlighter, my mouse on it, and it's going to tell me exactly what I'm supposed to do. But you no longer have to spend your time looking for them. Okay. And for instance, I don't use most of these. I don't even want to see most of the candlestick patterns. They just silly up my screen. So you have a choice of picking out which candlestick. Like, I don't want to see an abandoned baby. Doji's I always want to see. Dragonfly Doji, I don't care about. Engulfing candles, I always want to see. Hammers, I don't care about. Hagiman, Harami's. Harami's I do care about. Okay. I can pick and choose the patterns that are important to me. And then it'll what will appear on my chart are just those patterns that I want to see. And I don't have to spend my days staring at charts trying to figure out where the candlestick patterns are. And I sure don't care when it tells me that Although similar to the outside reversal chart pattern, it's not essential for the pattern to completely overtake the range high and low, rather only the open and the close. And it'll go on and on and say, when you see this pattern appear and this has happened, this is what you should be doing. Forget it. A bullish engulfing tells you there's a possibility of a change in the market. But you have to see that bullish engulfing candle in relationship to what is happening around it. Like here, when we get the bullish engulfing, that is a really vibrant signal. We see price falling, price falling. Okay, we reach a new low, and then we get a green candle, which ate up all of that decline. Okay, that's a strong engulfing signal. That's telling you that this downtrend that the price was in could be over or not moving any farther and if you notice we moved up to the close and now we've stayed pretty much on it but no more decline okay. so this was an important signal because how vibrant it was we got a bullish engulfing here it's a little nothing signal because barely basically an engulfing candle is just a candle that engulfs the previous candle but if it's a small candle it depends on where it was in a range so that's why you have to see it but like here Highlighter on here again for you. Here, what do we get? We hit a major resistance level here. Okay, we get a doji forming directly on the resistance level, and then we get a bearish engulfing candle. And what do we see? This uptrend that the price was on was killed. And look at that, it signaled a new downtrend to us. Okay, so we had everything support level trend line doji and engulfing it gave us a clear smack on the back of the head saying this uptrend is over and let's look for the beginnings of a downtrend if i was in the market at this point i would definitely have gotten out if i was thinking about selling into the market i would be ready to generate a sell. i wouldn't and generated it just here but i would have waited for a point in which to enter the markets and this is a live chart. I'm not making this up for making this chart for you. This is the live Euro US dollar chart. It's my teaching chart, but it just happened. This is what's happening today. Now, we've talked about these single and these multiple candlesticks patterns. Okay. But now you have a basic idea of what candlesticks indicate with their bodies and their wicks. So let's cut our teeth on some simple, uncomplicated patterns. Okay, so remember, we have the positioning of the candlesticks. We have what we call the standalone candles, a star position, which looks like it's a star above the prior position. We have shooting stars. We have inverted hammers that look like, please don't spend your time looking for them or memorizing them. 
again, in online trading, they appear so often that you never catch up to them. So we have the hammer. And now we have Harami. Harami is kind of like an engulfing candle. Harami in Japanese means pregnant. It's the newest candle that just completed is fully encapsulated within the open and the close of the previous candle. So this is like the little baby inside the mama's body. Doesn't matter if it's the opposite color. It just tells us that there's something going on. But Haramis also happen quite often. But the bullish Harami shows that sellers are beginning to dominate as they come back into the market. So bearish Harami has a shadow that extends beyond the body of the previous candle. Some traders wouldn't regard this as a true Harami because it should not have a candle that is farther. Its body is entirely within the previous candle. So I'll be blunt with you. Harami doesn't always live up to its height. While it's touted as a reversal indicator, you may find yourself disappointed by its reliability. You'll find yourself disappointed by almost all of these reliability because you need to look at more than that. And you don't want to get stuck into the fact that it's a reversal indicator and an engulfing indicator. So what do we learn so far? We talked about building a candlestick chart, understanding and reading the candlesticks. We talked about the shapes and sizes, the formation, the position. We talked about dojis, harami, tops and shadows, bulls versus the bears, hammers and hanging mats. Boy, have we talked about a lot. So now let's talk about multi-candlestick patterns. And I told you, it was a lot more than just reds and greens on a chart. Now, I didn't make up this chart, and I didn't make up these nicknames. The chart is true, but this Lonesome Cowboys 2 to Tango 3 Musketeers was made up by whoever made this chart. But they're one, the candles can come in single candlestick patterns, two candlesticks, like a bullish engulfing, or Marabuzo, or no, a bullish engulfing, or Harami, required two candles. We have things like Marabuzo, the doji, the hammer, the, that involve only one candle. And then we go on to the more complicated ones, the require three or more candles. And those are morning stars, evening stars, three white soldiers, three black crows, three inside up, three inside down. So ultimately, there's 18 the dominant patterns in candlesticks. But as I said, candlesticks are more about learning to look at the charts and using these charts, using the candlesticks as a visual representation to help you better understand what price is telling you. You can use them any which way you want. But like I said, today, our modern charts allow us to do anything and everything we want to do. We can, first of all, we can jump from time frame to time frame. But we can also go from candlesticks to bar charts in a second. We can go from candlesticks back to line chart and say, and back to our candlestick chart. So we have the advantage of using Many which ways, like I will often flip back to a bar chart and use my bars to see support and resistance levels because it's less, it's easier on my eyes. And then once I have them all drawn, I'll go back to my candlestick. I used to be just a bar chart trader. Today, I love candlesticks only because it gives me the flexibility of being able to see what price is trying to tell me. And as I mentioned to you, you can set whatever colors you want to set to see them. And with the candlesticks, you can set also whatever patterns you want to look at. Okay. And you decide you want you want your labels on your chart, you don't want your labels on a chart, and you know what chart you want them on. It's very, very easy today. Okay. I don't need them to point out bearish engulfing and bullish, but to be honest with you. I probably, this probably pointed out 
this bullish engulfing pattern faster than I would have noticed it. And therefore, it would have given me an edge. So there's many ways to use these candles or use candlesticks in our charting and our trading decisions. But please, don't over respond to reds and greens. And please do not memorize what each of these things are supposed to be and what your reaction is supposed to be. Understand the pattern is trying to tell you something, but you have to look at that pattern in relationship to a lot of other things before you can interpret. So memorizing is not a good thing. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye to all of you. You can go watch all this again on tomorrow by clicking on the same link. But thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading day. And thanks for being part of the LVEXO family. Bye now.